Welcome, Welcome to Own or Disown, where tech decisions are made easy. Hi, this is Stephen from Own or Disown. In today's video, I'm reviewing the 2023 MSI GT 77HX Titan. And I'll get this said right off the bat. It has the best cooling of any laptop I have tested so far this year. But before we jump into a, a review, a quick word from today's sponsor, myself. Last week, one lucky viewer won a Steam $5 gift card by finding the geek. Let me know the time frame he is in and you'll be entered into a draw for another five US dollar gift card. Now, anyone can enter, but for it to be sent via Steam, you need to have the country in your account set as the USA. So, good luck. Now, the GT77HX Titan was provided by Gentech PC and costs $4,300. But they also offer cash discounts, and depending upon where you live, it may well be tax-free. That was certainly the case when I bought from them. Now, by default, it comes with the 4K 144Hz HDR1000 Mini LED display, 13th Gen i9-13980HX CPU, 175 watt RTX 4080 mobile GPU with 12GB of VRAM, 64GB of DDR5 4800MHz RAM, 2TB SSD, and a Cherry MX mechanical keyboard with perky RGB. It has a 720p webcam with Windows Hello and a 99.9 watt hours battery. Now it has a MUX switch, but it has no advanced Optimus, which is a shame at this price point. This is the first mini LED display that I have seen, and the AUO panel has excellent blacks. I would say it is comparable to an OLED and show no backlight bleed whatsoever. The colour gamut is pretty decent, and it is super bright at 75% or higher, maxing out at 703 nits. Contrast was also insane, many levels better than a typical IPS panel we are used to seeing. Now I did do a white blooming test with a shutter speed of one thousandth of a second, and I could see no blooming. If you increase the shutter speed, you start to see a striped pattern emerging. Now Notebook Check says this is because the backlighting doesn't turn off completely. Only a small part of the mini LEDs are turned off, whilst the surrounding mini LEDs illuminate the switched off part. Now if you look carefully, you can even see it here in this footage of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now in practice, you can't see these lines, unless perhaps you are Cyclops from the X-Men. Now enabling HDR content made the 4K video content look very good. It was quite hard to capture because the panel was so bright. I enabled HDR in Battlefield 2042 and it made the game pop. It was less subdued and especially helped in darker scenes. Now my only complaint is that the 144Hz panel did not do very well in my ghosting test. So I would say it's more of a content creation, stroke media consumption panel first and a gaming panel second. Now fortunately for gamers, there is a QHD 240Hz option. Now here's a comparison of the thermals and fan noise using autofan. Extreme performance sees the 4080 pull 165 watts and 70 degrees, whilst the 13980HX pulls 76 watts and 77 degrees. In balance mode, the 4080 drops to about 155 watts and still at 70 degrees, and the 13980HX drops to 70 watts and is still at 77 degrees. Both seem to show about the same frame rate. Now, fan noise was about 59 decibels, which I found to be okay. There was no whining, whistling, or pulsing. In silent mode, the 4080 would fluctuate from 122 watts to 180 watts, probably averaging around 145 watts, and it would drop to 72 degrees. The 13980HX drops to about 57 watts and about 80 degrees, so it's a little bit warmer, but with a fan noise at only 39 decibels, it is a great trade off. And the frame rate, in Cyberpunk 2077 anyway, was only a couple of frames slower. Now, if you wanted to run balls to the wall and max out the fan, it would reach 67 decibels, which is definitely loud, and in my opinion, it's not needed. Now, the underside uses plastic with a metal insert panel for the air intakes, and you have decent sized feet to help with airflow. The 99 watt hour battery lasted me 3 hours 10 minutes, streaming YouTube at 50% brightness with all the battery saving features enabled and the panel set at 60 Hz. Now alongside this are two 2 watt speakers and there are also two 2 watt woofers that fire either side of the keyboard. And I found the speakers to be really good, they're clear, has decent bass and they're loud at 82 decibels. 
or four DIMM slots. So you can have up to a whopping 128 gigabytes of RAM, which is amazing. Plus you have three M2 slots, two are PCI Express Gen 2 and one is Gen 5. So it's a perfect system for handling large amounts of data. The Wi-Fi card is easily accessible and there are a total of eight heat pipes with two heat sinks at the sides and a really large one at the rear with a total of four fans. Unlike the Alienware M16 or the M18, it's all easily accessible should you need to work on it. Very good cooling indeed. At the rear, above the keyboard, are some air intakes, to which you have some RGB bling as well. You can see this in this thermal image as shown by the blue areas. Now, all in all, I was impressed with how cool this system is. I was a big fan of the mechanical keyboard. It's not too clicky and has good tactile feedback. About the same as the one on the Alienware M18, I would say. The Steel Series keyboard has excellent RGB, one of the best in my opinion, and unlike the Raider series, there is no, no RGB light bar at the front, which some will find appealing. In the centre, you have a large single piece glass trackpad that worked well, and to the right, you uh, also have a fingerprint reader, along with a Windows Hello webcam. Now, instead of the usual volume keys on the arrow keys, MSI now has them controlling media, cooler boost fan, and an aiming reticule. Here is what the webcam looks like. So disappointingly for the you know for the price of this laptop, it's only a 720p webcam. But the microphone is better than the, some of the previous MSI laptops I've had. So this is what it's like when I'm typing you know, on the mechanical keyboard and also when we activate the Max fan. It does a pretty good job, you know, of cutting that noise out. Now I do notice here that it also overexposes, so you may want to for an external webcam. Now kudos to MSI with continuing using a full size SD card reader rather than a micro SD. Next to it there are two USB 3.2 Gen Type A ports, the rectangular power connector and a combo headphone mic jack. Over on the right is a third USB Type A, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, one of which supports 100 watts power delivery charging, 20 volts at 5 amps. Now MSI recommends their own power delivery charger of course. Now there is also a mini display port, an HDMI 2.1 and an RJ45 port. Now there are no ports around the back, but you do have the uh, Mystic Light RGB, which extends to the MSI logo on the aluminium lid. Now for some reason, they shipped it with the large 330 watt power brick versus the one used on the GE78HX. And this is really daft for the top of the line system. Now by itself, it weighs seven pounds, 10 ounces and with the mammoth brick, 10 pounds, 12 ounces. So the laptop is about one pound heavier than the GE78HX without the brick, but it's still lighter than the Alienware M18. Now it is a desktop replacement for sure, so bear this in mind if you travel a lot. The 4080 is well suited for 4K gameplay. Here is Battlefield 2042 using ultra settings with no ray tracing or DLSS. Sometimes the GPU even goes over 175 watts uh, max graphics power, yet still runs cool. The Alienware M18's 13900HX would usually be close to 100 degrees unless you limit its power, whilst the 13980HX here is running in the mid 70s. I also tested it at 1440p and its performance was similar to the ASUS ROG Strix Scar 17 and better than the M18, especially those 1% lows. If you find that 4K is pushing it too hard, you can drop to 1440p as I have here in Battlefield 5 using DX11 Ultra settings. Now, I remember it wasn't long ago we were getting about 120 FPS at 1080p in this game and the Titan blew the competition away. Alternatively, you can use standard DLSS to get about 60 FPS with Ray Tracing Ultra in Watch Dogs Legion. And in fact, using DLSS at 4K gives about the same frame rate as no DLSS at 1440p. And of course, with Nvidia's 4000 series, you do get frame generation on some games. Here is uh, Cyberpunk 2077, 4K Ray Tracing Ultra DLSS balance with frame generation, and we are getting about 80 FPS. And this is not far behind the same settings at 1440p with no frame generation. Now I'm still on the fence on whether frame generation improves 1% lows, and I do plan on checking that in a later video. Now there's no point having you know, a high average if you'd still get stutters. So what do I think of the GE77HX Titan? Well. As a previous owner of the GT73 VR, I will always have a soft spot for the Titan. It is a power user's laptop. There is no compromise in storage, 
There's no compromise in RAM. The system will last you years. It has the best cooling in the 13th gen laptop I have seen thus far. There's no need to do any tweaking, but if you like doing that kind of thing, you can do a lot in MSI's advanced BIOS. The speakers, the ports, RGB, the keyboard are great as well. And the screen is drop dead gorgeous. I just wish there was a 240Hz 4K mini LED panel available. I also wish there was an advanced Optimus, and for over $4,000, there really should be, given that machines nearly half that price have it now. I'm sure the price on these MSI high-end uh, machines will come down. I've already seen Microcenter slash $500 off the GE78HX, so it might be prudent just to wait a bit. But like I said, at the start, you may be able to get it tax-free from Gentech PC, which you know, would save you nearly $300. Plus, if you order from them and ask for Ken, you should get $50 discount if you mention my channel. Thank you for watching. Smash that like button and I'll see you next time. Bye.